the main theme of today's webinar is how to future proof your kids. And if I just stick to the example of the festivities, two completely different ones, Halloween and Diwali, one about darkness and one about light, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to be in an international yet multicultural environment. So this is what NeoVale is about. How do you take learning and how do you make it personalized, effective, and enjoyable for kids. I'm Aradna, I'm the CEO of NeoVale, originally from India, like many of our attendees today. I've lived and worked in the UK and I moved to Singapore over a decade ago. I'm delighted to be joined by Elaine Chu, who's our COO for this webinar. We both come with a wealth of experience in international school environments, as well as business. Thank you so much for the introduction, Aradna. So today, of course, we are going to be discussing the changing skill set and needed, which is needed by the young people of today for the workplace and the university of tomorrow. So we're going to start today actually with a poll. So the poll is all about how you as an audience have been affected by globalization. So this could be during the pandemic, or of course, they could just be beforehand. So we've got three main questions for you and hopefully you should see those on your screen now. So did you yourself go to an international university or have you worked for a multinational company? Secondly, do you aspire for your child to work or study in a global environment? And lastly, what are you already doing to develop these skills in your child? And I can see people starting to answer. Thank you so much. It's going to be really interesting to look at your opinions and your ideas about the effect of globalization on our children. So 67 people, I see a few raised hands. I'm just going to give the results and then I'll come straight to those people. Um, so 67% of us have either worked in a national in multinational company or been to an international university. Every single person in the audience who replied to the poll aspires for their child to work or study in a global environment. And most people are building these skills through um, either international school or through parenting. I can definitely relate to these results. Um, I was one of the first people in my family to get a global education and work in multiple international organizations in different countries. I know my parents aspired for me to have this, just as many of us parents here today want to do, uh, want our children to have too as well. One of the most fascinating experiences of my university as well as professional journey was developing the skills to deal with the several challenges I faced at every single step. There's been a lot of research into the changing landscape of what education needs to look like. And I'm gonna to refer to a TED talk by the pediatrician, Dr. Laura Jana, who looked at this in 2018 and pointed out that two thirds of the jobs that children of today will be doing don't even exist yet. Isn't that just a terrifying thought? We don't even know the names of the jobs that children will be doing. And you may be thinking to yourself, okay, well, what can you do to prepare for a job that we don't know exists? And that's a really, really good question. And Dr. Laura Jana pointed out, and this is something that us at Neobel really believe in, what you can do is you can build skills. So you can build the skills that are gonna be needed for the future. And we may want to believe that these sort of soft skills or 21st century skills could be built in, for example, high school or where I think definitely both me and Aradna built them, which is university or maybe even in the workplace. But there's been a lot of research into this to show that these sort of soft skills need to be developed at primary age in childhood. And this avoids harder problems later. So one of the first things about self-learning is to demonstrate that. As parents, I truly believe that we have to be able to, parents and educators, we have to be able to demonstrate, we have to be able to lead by example. So if you're already demonstrating that at home, then I would encourage when your child comes to you with um, a question saying, for example, I don't know what to do with this math problem. What, what, what should I do? Or can you read this passage out for me? What is wrong with my grammar? I would always, I always ask my children, what have you tried? Tell me what have you tried doing so far? So you've come telling me the problem. Tell me what you have tried so far. So once they tell me, for example, I have tried, um, I have tried, I'll stick to the example of grammar. I've tried looking at my passage again. So I've then I would say that, okay, have you tried using a dictionary? Have you tried this? Have you tried that? So my point here is in order to encourage a culture of self-learning, we have to, as parents and educators, we have to demonstrate it. And going back to one of the points Elaine and I spoke about is really resist the 
need to just jump right in and give the solution. 